Clemens, who celebrate the birthday of one Samuel Clemens, better known as Mark Twain, who spoke about the best of times and the worst of times in London and Paris before and during the French Revolution. There is a revolution going on at North Street, but the stage is set right here at the office. The teams, they do have a date with destiny. My name is Donald Oliver. With me is Chris Taylor and Christopher Scott. Their initial thoughts on this matchup today in the Manning Cup final. Big matchup. As I said earlier and off here, it's, it's one family, or um, the tale of a family with two different mothers. <laughs> Certainly, um, born from the same origin and so on, and the Kingston College and St. George's. Heavy rivalry, amazing that they have never met in an out and out Manning Cup final, but certainly the rivalry great and, 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 and a spectacle for a lot to see two teams who have, well, certainly from the Kingston College perspective, have promised a lot over the last three years. Finally, they have gotten over that hurdle of semi final berth and got to the final. And St. George's, who much was not expected of necessarily this season, Neville Burtis Bell have resurrected this team and put them in different positions and got them to, a, to, to this critical, critical stage. Of course, the under 16 final would have been played moments before, and Kingston College, they have the early dragon right. They got the better of St. George's College by two goals in Elkhurst Scott. Yeah, they, they were brilliant. and, and, and Goldson was absolutely great. He was everywhere on the field for Kingston College, and he got that one. And it was brilliant work by John Mark Gale. And again, Goldson was very, very dangerous for Kingston College. And this time, Tyrese Williams put it away, and that was the end of that for St. George's College against this. As we take a look at the history and the winners uh, over the years, of course, these two would have been number two and three in terms of teams who have won the most time the Valley Cup first Yes, in George's College, there we see the top eight. Jamaica College at the top with 29, of course, coming off five time wins, five time winners. St. George's with 22, Kingston College with 14. And of course, as you know, none since 1986 for Kingston College. They've won all their titles between 1949 and 1986, the most dominant schoolboy team within that period. St. George's last one in 2012, where they did the double 2011 and 12 under Neville Burtis Bell, and they have 22 days sit at second in that list. There we see Kingston College's results, their last seven of them. De defeating Cumberland by three goals to one and six goals to one. That was in the second round of the Manning Cup. In the quarter-final stage, they then had two draws. Nil all against the same St. George's team and one all against Charlie Smith. And then they defeated Camperdown in the final game to top that group by two goals to nil. And, of course, their victory over St. Andrew Technical by two goals to one. That was in the semi-finals. St. George's College, on the other hand, they easily brushed by Mona in the second round of the competition. 4-1 first leg, 3-0 the second leg. Of course, the nil-all draw was St. George's College at St. Amis. Uh, Chris Taylor said was the best goalless draw that he has ever seen. And they also drew nil-all with Camper Downs, got the better chance with 2-1. And, of course, defeated the defending champions, Jamaica College, by two goals to one. Big results for St. George's College. And it was, it was very, very confident um, by St. George's College as we see the head-to-head -head with these two. Yeah, head to head as you see, 2018 that draw, and yes, definitely the best middle draw I have seen, and it was really an exciting game, unable to break down each other, and that's why this matchup is so much water, and in 2017 they met, Kingston College got a 2-1 victory, and they traded place in St. George's in 2015 with a 2-0, and a 7-0 job in, we did that game as well in 2014, St. George's destroying them at Winchester Park by seven goals to nil. And of course that was under the, the tutelage of Lenny Teacher Hyde at that stage. Let's learn a little bit more about Kingston College. In 1924, Bishop of Jamaica, Dr. G. F. C. De Cartwright, in partnership with Reverend Percival William Gibson, purchased the former All Saints Rectory located at 114 and 3 quarter East Street. 
Several months later, on April 16, 1925, Kingston College opened its doors to 49 students, with Reverend Gibson as its first headmaster. Two years later, the Kingston-based institution, dubbed KC, was moved to its new home at 2A North Street. As the need for space increased due to the number of student admissions, the property located at 13 Upper Elliston Row was purchased from the Melbourne Cricket Club in 1963. Today, the Melbourne campus is home to grades 7 through 9, while the upper school remains at the North Street campus. Undeniably, the road in building the powerhouse at his Kingston College has proved to be a battlefield at times. However, as their motto goes, Fortis, Cadere, Sedere, non potest, the brave may fall, but never yield. And yield they have not. Securing many coveted accolades in competitions such as schools challenge quiz, boys champs, and the Sunlight Cup, which subsequently has cemented their position as giants in both the academic and athletic spheres. Many believe that to be a vortex is a way of life, and that purple and white are not simply colors found in a spectrum, but worn together are symbols of loyalty, perseverance, and excellence. So that's the history lesson of Kingston College, founded in 1925. The traditional colors, purple and white, and of course, the same purple from North Street, singing their 50th Manic Cup crown. Let's hear from Lotte Bernard, head coach. Each season we speak of the tremendous pressure that's placed on Kingston College in this competition. As the school gets ready to play their first final since 2000, how have you advised the players? They take the cue from the captain. It's a very calm individual and resonates to the team. We try to be quiet and confident, stay grounded, stay focused, don't get too excited. We have implemented some things on which we think would have achieved this. And we're really looking forward for them to come up here today and give our compost for farmers. No, this isn't the Roper Cup, nor is it two friendly neighbors exchanging pleasantries. This is the first time in history KC and Georges are playing in a Manning Cup final. Explain the significance of a win today. Why the significance? Um, Bragging rights, Battle of North Street, playing for the Manning Cup title, a lot is at stake. And because of that, we are treating it, we are treating the game in that respect. We are hoping to be victorious this evening. Now our water players to watch are Captain Kasim Priestley, whose solid presence in the middle of the park is a stabilizer for KC, and Ari Rogers, of course, whose movement on the ball in the attacking third adds another dimension. They need to be in their A game today. Yeah, well, most definitely. Rogers is somebody who we're heavily dependent on, along with the supporting cast. Priestley is the one who will probably remain, keep the stability inside of the team. And if he reports in good shape, and condition today, the team is going to play well. So as we take a look at the water players to watch from Kingston College, Kasim Priestley, he's their captain, he needs to come good. 17 years of age now would have gotten exposure with the national under 20 team in Florida. That excellent performance that the young reggae boys put forward, Kasim Priestley, in his second season, a rock in the middle of the pass, certainly in the top three in terms of defensive midfielders, I think in schoolboy football this season, 15 appearances um, to his name, and the goals column not really important for his job here today. And of course, Aaron Rogers, critical Chris Scott. <laughs> very, very critical. Uh, many persons were wondering how he would do, would he transfer well from track and field to football? And certainly he has done that very, very well. Eight appearances, eight goals this season. And he'll be looking to get on the score sheet this time around. Ratio of one goal per game. That is astonishing. And that is right. And two assists in the semi-final as well, which was integral. He was a player of the match in that game and integral to them getting through to this final. Let's learn a little bit now about your neighbours, St. George's College.
located at Winchester Park North Street stands the illustrious institution of St. George's College. The Roman Catholic institution, which started out as an all-male establishment, now houses females as part of their sixth form program, which was implemented in 2005. But St. George's College has come a far away. Established on September 2, 1850, 168 years ago, the college materialized through the works of 21 Spanish Jesuits who had been exiled as part of religious persecution. At their head was Father Emmanuel Gil S.J., a distinguished scholar and former court preacher to the King of Spain. Amidst a storm of protest against Roman Catholic priests, opening Jamaica's first secondary institution for classic and scientific education, St. George's College began its long and proud history in a rented house at 26 North Street. The school moved up to 5 Upper King Street and changed its name to St. George's Presbytery Secondary School. After a series of closures from 1866 to 1877, the school reopened its doors in 1905 when the Jesuits bought a large property called the Pawsey's Pen, what is now Winchester Park, from Mr. Alfred Pawsey where they constructed their first faculty building. In March 1939, St. George's College built the first science laboratory on the island. They have also made their mark in the sporting arena, winning to date 22 Manning Cup titles, showing that they are a force to be reckoned with. The school's motto reflects the vision and spirit of the over 160-year-old institution. Ad majorem, de gloriam, for the greater glory of God. St. George's College should have been one of the first teams to contest the uh, Manning Cup. Of course, they were founded in 1850. Their traditional colors, light blue and white, and the population 1350. They're looking for their 23rd Manning Cup crown. Let's hear from their head coach, Neville Curtis Bell. Neville, for the first time, we're truly experiencing this battle of North Street. How would you put this final into context? Um, St. George's College playing against a very good kids at college team. As far as this rivalry goes, I don't think any of these kids are interested in that. Um, they would not have known of the, the glory days. And I've been coaching at St. George's overall for about 17 years. And this is the first square meeting in a, in a big final. We played the Walker Cup final in 2011. So it's a huge game. And it's a huge game for us as much as it is for them. Now the fact that you eliminated the defending champions have, in the opinion of many, given you the edge in this one. Does that alleviate or add to the pressure? I well, disagree that it gives us the edge. I think we start um, even Stephen. This is a brand new game. Um, so no, no. To answer your question, no, I don't think it gives us the edge. We're a confident bunch. And if they're not as confident as we are, then that gives us the edge. But no, they're a pretty good team. I'd like to think that we have quality players. And I pray, I hope that we will be successful. Now our KFC Big Deal players to watch today are Damani Harris and Emilio Rosu. They're both critical clubs in your wheel. What words do, do you have with them today? I want everybody. Let's have some fun. Um, before the Jamaica Paris match, I didn't speak a lot. I said, you know, some games you need hard, you need belly. I said, go out and play some good football. Basically, that's kind of what I said today. I said, um, I'm not ready to, to go home yet. And it is amazing that with one game left in Manning Cup and two games left in schoolboy football, we still have a chance to win two titles. That's amazing. I thank God for that. And I, and I hope it, it works for us tonight. As we take a look at the KFC Big Deal players to watch, Emilia Rousseau described by Neville Curtis Bell as having the best kick from a schoolboy he's ever seen, Chris Taylor. Most impressive left back I've seen this season for sure. Emilia Rousseau, 18 years of age, four seasons under his belt, formerly of Rousseau, of, of Rousseau, Box Hall High School, <laughs> 17 appearances and 10 goals during that time. He needs to have a good game for St. George's today for them to play well. And his left foot, a critical part of their makeup. Very, very versatile um, is Emilia Rousseau. And of course, up top is Damani Harris, Chris Scott. Damani Harris, 15 goals this season in 18 appearances. Not bad for Damani Harris. Actually, very excellent. And five seasons in. And they will need him to be very, very clinical. He was clinical in the last match. Got 
of the score sheet, Chris, and he'll be looking to get more today. Yes, yeah, scored a good goal. He's been that man for Neville Burtis. Been that goal to man. Not a lot of striker, but he plays in that false nine role very well, and he's adapted well to this position. And he'll be the potent man up front for St. George's. All right, we take a quick break here from the mecca of Jamaica's football. When we return, you'll see the teams walk out, and then we'll have kickoff in this Manny Cup final 2018. Between them, 77 schoolboy football titles. Between them, 36 Manny Cup crowns. Between them, 21 All Ireland Olivia Shield wins. Between them, pride and prejudice. North Street is the most decorated of all. Never has a strip of asphalt held more sporting weight. And it is poised to hold yet another challenge. There are no neutrals on this divide. What is your hue? Is it purple or is it blue? The players are absolutely pumped for this 2018 ISA Digital Manny Cup Final here at the National Stadium. And you can hear the crowd. The crowd is booming and they are excited. The battle of the North Street is here. And they can't wait for the whistle to be blowing. This is very exciting. The first time they've met in the Manning Cup final and I know all of us are waiting. I know the fans are waiting and the players are waiting as well to get this started. Well, we still haven't felt the pants of winter's breeze from the north, but if this game is the early Christmas gift football loving Jamaicans expect, they would gladly embrace the last cool evening in November. Taylor. It's a cool atmosphere. And they're going through the pleasantry. Both teams have won 14 games so far this season. Kings and College, they have played two games left. 17 games played, 14 wins, one loss, two draws. They have scored 67 goals and conceded six. St. George's have played 19 because they went two rounds further in the Champions Cup. They have won 14 as well, though. Lost just a solitary game. And drawn four, they have scored 57 and conceded nine. So both, both, of course, an impressive record this season with just one last each. Coming, of course, in the Champions Cup, respectively. Yeah, they're pretty much unbeaten in the Manning Cup competition. And, of course, one of them will go down today. As you say, never they met in the out and out money But in 1959, it was still a league format. They met, the team, the, well, the teams were equal at the end of the league, and they had to play a playoff. St. George's College defeated Kingston College by a goal to nail. That goal was scored by Dennis Barnett. And that team also included the great Winston Dynamite Lynn in 1959. In 1958, yeah, the year earlier, yeah, they, they, they made twice. The last match in the league was between the two. Kingston College won by four goals to nil. And Fabri uh, Marbrisio, um, Valet, Marbrisio Ventura actually scored two goals in that game. And then they had to meet in a playoff again. Kingston College won that time by a goal to nil. And that was in 1958. Ventura scored a goal. He is a father of a former national. Well, we paused for a plane of the national anthem. I don't think we'll forget that rendition anytime soon as the teams meet each other <laughs> as well as the officials for today's matchup. An all female cast will be officiating this Manic Cup final. Fortis or at the light blues. That's the question being asked here this evening. The team's taking their official photos before the captains go for the toss. What 
could be going to the minds of the skippers. Shepard Denton of St. George's College, the scene priestly of Peaks of College. Denton is awaiting his opposite number. As Kasim Priestley comes into the picture now. Odette Hamilton is in charge of this game. She will be assisted by Jacqueline Carr and Montague Gale. There is a goal to get a fourth official. This is Kingston College as we know them this evening. Nathaniel Francis in goal. In front of him, Jamal Fusey, Tremaine Simpson, Shaheen Edmondson, Kasim Treesley in the middle of the park, Shaquille Smith, Ari Rogers of Tom Scott McLeod, Nathan Thomas, Dwayne Atkinson, and Oniko Allen, their coach by the Butler Bernard. And of course, they'll set up in a 4 3 3 formation. Dwayne Atkinson back into the starting lineup. I think that's a good move from Ludlow Bernard as he certainly added that needed energy on the right hand side, the number 13 for Kingston College. Anika Allen, formerly of Monroe, he will do the striking on the top front. And of course, the dangerous Harry Rogers with his pace from the flank and his ability to engage his other teammates in terms of attack. They will become, they will be important. Shaquille Smith behind them. And of course, that impressive defensive midfield of Nathan Thomas and Cassie Prisley. As we take a look now at the St. George's College lineup in goal, Orville Spiegel, Emilia Rousseau, Lee Prof. Letman Jr., Fanita Campbell, and Dean Cameron, Marshall in the back, Jordan Petrikin, Damani Harris, Nathaniel Campbell, Jaheim Brown is in the starting lineup, Shepard Denton, of course, the captain, Marshall in the troops in the middle of the park, Devon Dunkley also up front, they are going to fight another person's spell. And a 4 3 4 4 2 formation for St. George's College. And we see Devon Dunkley coming into the lineup as well as Janine Brown on the right hand side. And we see Petrikin moving into the middle of the park. And he'll be the one that will be breaking a place in the midfield for St. George's College. And he will be very much needed with this lineup. So 4 4 2 for St. George's College. Everybody, Hamilton is ready. And Kingston College will pick off this 2018 ISA Digital Manning Cup final. They'll be kicking towards Kingston Harbour and the Caribbean Sea. St. George's College will be kicking towards the hills in the first half. The last time these two met at the long draw of the National State of East Field. It was a pretty cagey appearance. Both teams showed a lot of respect to each other. They, of course, would have met in the World Cup in three season. That also ended in a draw that the Bernard at the head coach of Kingston College. I'm not sure if I agree that the battle was cagey by any means. I actually thought it was very enterprising in terms of the football game. You do remember that it took 80 minutes to see the first foul from St. George's College in that game. That was a month ago. It was actually, I thought, a very good game of football as we see Levy Burton is well, the head coach of St. George's. Joint top coach in terms of money titles with five, equal with Mega and Coley, of course. So, joint most successful coach at this level in the urban area. Levy Burton is well. First one in 1992. He came to St. George's in 1991. Lost in the semi final to eventual winners Arden. And then lifted the title a year later against Tivoli in the final by two goals to one. Your brother, Christopher, was it was in Georgia that year. Yeah, it was between the sticks and uh, I try not to use that every day, but uh, St. George's College, he as a goalkeeper was very excellent and he is pride and true, true and blue. Jackie Brown on the ball for St. George's College. Natalia Campbell would be a good and the you found him same for you said a rugged start. I mean, as you found it known, right away they hit the spot. One of the most talented goalkeepers I've ever seen in, 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 in schoolboy football. Very talented. I'm 
quick pass here on the play. And it's going to be a, a quick hit to St. George's College just inside their own half. Lost ball over the top. Maybe they will still won't be able to get there though. But I'm going to try to throw it all the way. Amelia Russell will be very important for St. George's College, one of the best, and some might say the best left back in a schoolboy football this season. And they will need all of him and his defensive effort and attacking prowess. He has a very, very strong and accurate left foot. And we saw it against St. Andrew Technical High School in their Champions Cup quarterfinals. And he could come into play here. Played inside the box, and George's College able to head it away. Trying to come up with the old defensive third now. Jackie Brown with the touch of feet. And cleared before Ramani Harris could get a good play. The football continues to play around him. It's been very interesting to see as we have a look at the replay here of the foul and there was certainly a foul there. Nice touch from Rogers. The second touch was as good as the first though. 
He had eyes for Odiko Allen, but he couldn't find him. And Dina Rousseau going forward. And that was Duncan, rather. And there's Paris! The Czech star couldn't find the target. Well, the game has continued in the same vein to what we saw a month ago. Enterprises, open football, good football. And exciting the defense of Kingston College at the Vanya. Well, it was closed down in the end. And I think the pressure that was brought on him caused him, forced him to stop that shot wide. And I think he probably could have taken the shot and go even wider on the left and then probably swung it in for Duncan. Maybe would have gotten um, a shot and goal, but as we see, what Neville is doing is that he's trying to soak the pressure and then hit them on the counter. And when he hits them on the counter, he's very dangerous. As you can see, Damani Harris runs into space very well, and that is why he got that opportunity. The second touch was the best player. And now Harry Rogers off to run for this one. Could find Atkinson. Goes behind for the corner kick for Kingston College. Had a bit more time than he thought there, Rogers, because actually nobody had gotten into the box properly yet. So I should have probably held it up a bit instead of forcing the pass. Luckily for him, he's still there in the corner. But again, a bit of nervous defending from the likes of Cameron. Second short. Quick to back to their post! Nathan Thomas was a bit surprised that it got to him and it bounced off his chest like a wall, really. <laughs> Funny you mention wall because that's his job in the middle of the park. <laughs> Ensure that the ball doesn't get around or pass him. Not well, known for his scoring flavor. And then trying to get that one in the area to the Rogers. Allen wins it. And the camera got a foot in. Nice work. Sit inside the area. Needs a good cross. Shaquille Smith. There is Priestley. Not for sure that was the right idea for the Kingston College captain. Not have scored so far this season because he's with it. They're not known for that area of the game, but still trying one from distance comfortably wide. But good to see how Kingston College coming into their own on the attacking sense. Here's a corner that was put into the box. Dangerous. I don't think Nathan Thomas didn't expect it. Doesn't have that goal scoring instinct. Nathan Thomas and the ball actually did come to him pretty quickly as well. But Kingston College look dangerous coming in from the flank. And when they do put the ball up on the ground, they look a lot more dangerous than when it's played over the top in the air. Morgan's Michael had a, a few spectators hearts in their mouths just now as he collected that one outside the air, but the flag did go up for offside. <laughs> So, tracked again by a couple of players and was held back, free kick for St. George's College. We so saw one of the players to watch. Very into running in St. George's College going forward. Brown with the head of Nathaniel Campbell. Campbell takes it forward, he was looking for Devani Harris. Jamar Pugh is happy for Kingston College. Trying to get by Sheva Denton. Couldn't supply the pass. Harris. Dunkley. Brown. Was all over the park. Jackie Brown. The number 13 for St. George's College. Trying to stop Pugh from going forward now. Of course, Jamal Pugh is another player that appears. Both sides of North Street as well as Petrikin played a season with St. George's College. Jamal Pusey. When well, was that? Was that Kingston College first? Then went for a year at St. George's and has no return. 
of the winner. Atkinson does well to get by the sword. And the sword is even better to stop him. And the win the goal kick for his team. And I think the fitness of Emilio Rousseau and his defensive prowess came into play there. Saw that he lost it. And because he was so quick, he closed down on the space very, very well. And when he saw that the King's College player won it back, he rushed got that in his favor. shown by Damani Harris, fought off the defender and was able to set up one inside the box. So 
Jones knocked out. Top players at the moment is Jaheim Brown. Get some treatment. Lovely ball to Tommy Rogers! Deflected wide for the corner. Quite a few misplaced passes so far by Nathan Thomas. This one was perfect. And I like to think that Smythe would have had that cover from Harry Rogers, but great move by Nathan Thomas running right through the center of the defensive line of St. George's. And that pass was beautifully weighted for once from the Kingston College number four. Second point pick to Kingston College. Was the best man for us all. Would have preferred the first in this corner from Kingston College. But Kingston College are room for it. And as you said, they're picking up the pace from where they left off both teams because both teams have shown that they can go for the both teams show that they can have opportunities or present opportunities or create opportunities to put the ball into the back of the net. Now, so to know John Petrick in actually that player that intercepted the shot from Rogers. So his natural instinct as a centre back as well to get back covering well. Petrick. Yeah. Certainly does very well in the defensive half of the field. John Petrick himself and then done have a lot of work to do. That's the versatility of Petrick. He's able to play the centre back, he's able to play the central defensive midfield role because he's able to pick up the plays in the middle of the park. Like a David Louise. <laughs> I was about to say, yeah, but David Louise is he played in the centre back role. I was about to say, where were the centre backs? Why were they doing that job? <laughs> <laughs> yeah, he's very much like David Louise. Rogers. Kasim Frisley. Looking for the outlet. The way that Cook Strauss he found, he was. I think it's a college may be contemplating going direct towards goal in this one. This is the one who has placed this one down. Or, or the strike is trying to settle the ball. The shot is taken and it's right at the target. He scored an outstanding free kick early in the season. Aaron Rodgers come up further distance. In fact, it was closer to the half line. This one wasn't, first, wasn't far away. So, does have the ability, good pace to the kick. Just a little bit wide. Again, every time they have gone for the aerial route, KC, they have been unsuccessful because the height of Cameron and so on. St. George's deal with that very well, but when it comes along the carpet, it's a harder proposition. It's okay. I lost it. Atkinson can't find Rogers, who's appealing for a half goal. Comfort of left the back. Come out to Campbell. Goes down the flank. Jaheim Brown has a lot of work to do. Gets a throw for his team. You know, like a meter or so, Kanata Campbell hasn't got to make any of those enterprising overlapping rows down the right hand flank so far in this game because they've been well pressed by Kingsman College. But like this, only has a shot in him. Cusey. This game from college is starting again from the back. Rogers. Shaquille Smith. Smith does well. Looking for Nico Allen. Thomas lost it to Jenny Brown, who's been busy in the middle of the park. Kerry is trying to get up the end of the ball. 
gets there. Ooh. The man has some other chances because that was the direction he was going in initially.
Not sure if it was the right option from Aaron Rodgers, though. Good ball into the box. Deep in door. Uh, it's difficult for Rodgers, but he tried his best. Might have been maybe looking to use the inside of his right foot. Side foot it. Instead, that would always have been a difficult thing, especially in terms of reading the bounce. All three quarter kicks of the game so far. Going to kick the college, it's delivered inside, it's headed away. By Rasul. Another chance for another delivery. All on the ground! Rogers missed it! And it's put behind for a corner! Only just, only just for Kingston College. Kingston College looking dangerous, but looking double dangerous when the ball is on the ground. Here is a ball into the box all along the turf. And St. George is not organized. Well, neither was Rogers. <laughs> and luckily for Cameron, the ball skewed wide off of his boot. That could have gone anywhere as well. Corner kick number four. Again at the near post. Now it's through to the field. Connected by Campbell. Beautiful ball to Jackie Brown. Campbell has some work to do. Too much work. Yeah, but that was poor movement by Campbell. Campbell played the one to win, I think Brown did the right thing, but you stop Campbell at that stage with acres of space in front of you, you're looking to push forward, get them on the counter, involve the man in Harris. I think that Campbell should have filled that gap and continued his run. Also, even if he had made the run late, he couldn't have actually tried to latch on to the ball because he even stopped or slowed his pace down, even when he thought he realized that he couldn't get to the ball. Nathan Thomas, two excellent passes in a row. Nathan Thomas, not a man known for his, his passing in the, in the final third. That kind of cutting edge pass is not normally his forte. Conata Campbell now. Touch the inside. Nathaniel Campbell. 
Yes, it's now with Sheko Tempton. Emilio Brussel. Brussel. We have a shot from distance from the skipper. And it's high and wide from Sheko Tempton. It's a sparring contest at the moment. The jumps being put in by either team. Well, that one from Rona should have been an uppercut. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, St. George's College should have been on the canvas there at least. But it missed. Yeah. And it's easy for a central to Jackie Brown to dump it. Dump it. To running great into space. Damani Harris always puts himself into dangerous position. We saw it when he scored the goal against Jamaica College. And we see it here. He takes the advantage. St. George's College has the advantage now. Try to force that one through. 
resume a deep ball of field, trying to find the dumpling. But there is Jermaine Simpson. What notable for me in that play was how deep Aaron Rodgers had to come, but maybe since enjoyed coming forward again. They like to come down, obviously, in the media or so, as we give the job of doing most of the overlapping. Obviously, because of the, da the danger he brings to that final of third. So, St. George's, when they do go down the flaps, most of the time looking to do it down the left hand side. So, for that one inside the area, Thomas is there to get it out of the box. Shaquille Smith looking for options, decides to switch the play. Nika Allen playing so deep in this one. Lucky days down there. So he has put this with the fault of there. And as I said, Jordan's got it trying to find Harris. Forced to go by Rousseau. Was there a handball? No. According to the referee, Tremaine Simpson tried to clear. He finally does. Picked up now by Rogers. Rogers getting by one, trying to get by Fetch Pin to come into the foul. And this is a problem for Kingston College. Both Rogers and Allen have to be coming so deep almost to the half line to collect the ball because of how St. George's are pressing them back. Need to, because he basically needs to find a way to push his midfield further down the park to involve his forward field more in and around the 18 yard area. coming from the bench. Priestley delivers this one. Flag stays down. Rogers. Rogers. So the reason for that we see Aaron Rodgers dropping so deep is because a lot of the times he wants to start to play, he wants to make that run, probably give a, do a kick and go with even Nathan Thomas, with maybe a Cassim Priestley, or maybe the other players up front with him, and that is his strength, is run off the ball and gives dangerous, dangerous plays in terms of starting, starting the runs for Kingston College. So, they would want to do that, Aaron Rodgers would want to do that against St. George's College in order to be effective. Shaquille Smith tried to win it back. Shaquille Smith. Rogers stole it. Couldn't capitalize, but the whistle goes. So he kicked the things in college. So Jones College were playing around with it in the dangerous area. Yeah, I actually thought it was a foul before that. I think I did I was trying to play the advantage. Yes, really work out in this way. Here is it. Look at it. It wasn't much in it, but we really let that speed doesn't take much. To bring it out. Yeah. Second opportunity in the space of minutes for Kingston College to get a ball into the 18 yard box with numbers forward. I think they would love to get that Melissa going back before half time because it's, it's soon approaching as well. That one wasn't even close.
look at that first half of the scene here. And this Manic Cup final. The Bubazillas continue to be a nuisance inside the National Stadium. Allen. To Husey. To Mark Husey. Get away with it there. Rogers. Too much on it. What I'm fixing. I don't think St. George is mind that all evening. Having Harry Rogers by the sidelines, looking to put balls into the box. We shall not come in with the best of accuracy. If that continues for the next 50 minutes, they will think they have had a successful day. And we will do right now. To be honest, Rousseau was a bit flat footed as well. It was caught by that pass, it would be looking obvious that Doctor would have wanted to play it into his path, so he should have been moving forward. Jamari Morris and I'd like to pull wide and do the speed and cut in might be the players that would be employed into this kind of match up here. Straight through to Nathaniel Francis. Just a minute to be added on for stoppages. And then if you do have those kind of players, it allows Rogers to then stay inside and run the line, run, make those diagonal runs. So I would be surprised if one of those changes are made in short order. Kingsford College, the first bench of the Manning Cup back in 1928. And then their first meeting with St. George's College, with uh, St. George's College, they went down by three goals to one. And then the second time that they would have met, they went down by three goals to nil. It's, it's interesting how far Kingsford College has come from to be at this stage. Because when they began, they were the ones of the litter, so to speak, of the five schools, they were pretty much laughing stuff. No facilities to speak up, as you see Allen twisting and turning and delivering inside the area. And the shot by Rogers is high and wide. Yeah, they had a late start, Kingston College, as you see. 1928 compared to 1909, so 19 years before St. George's had the start. And they've had a late start to this game as well. And we take a look at the last shot presented to our Rogers. And the Ugandans have had the best of the opportunities in this first half. But after 45 minutes, Rogers with regret. And Devani Harris with the goal. St. George's College, they beat Kingston College by both in the courtesy of their number nine, who got his 16th this season. Raymond, what's the assistant coach of Kingston College? Raymond, you got the chance, you got the goal on a plateau, but Ari Rogers couldn't deliver. What were you thinking when you saw that miss? I, I was already celebrating. I was astounded. Words can't describe the feeling to know that he misses normally so reliable. But kudos to St. George's College. They're really giving us, they're playing well. Now, 
you are usually very confident, but you also normally have some changes in the bag. What's coming up for the second half? Um, it's Christmas, so I'll have to go into my goodies basket and see if I can pluck a rabbit out of that right now. Who's the rabbit? Um, Jamar Mars. All right, thank you, Coach. And, and we'll be also introducing Trevor and Reed. Look forward. Thank you, Coach. Thanks very much. Raymond Watson there spilling the beans and giving us some gifts at Christmas time. Joining me now is Marcel Gale of St. George's College. One nil at the halftime break. Now for second half, it's all about maintaining this. How do you do that? Uh, to come to the glory. I, I, I think we we'll start the game well. Um, you know, we have impressed KC and you know, eventually we get a goal. But um, it's an even game in the balance here, we have to be careful. Um, but you just want to go back for the second half and, and get back our pieces together and, and start again like how we uh, start again like how we start again first half. Thank you, Marcel. You're welcome. Marcel gave there of St. George's College, hoping to come back out strong once again in the second half while Kingston College, they're looking to make some changes to at least get a goal or two in this final. We're at the National Stadium. It is the Issa Digital Manning Cup final. We'll be right back with first half highlights and I'll be in the stands. is here and Jamari Mar Marson is also getting ready to come on so double change made by Kingston College no surprise here as we did see expected both of them to come on they're looking to use the wide area of Kingston College and these two players good exploiters of that tactic Harry Rogers and the second half is on the way for this is that did sell Manning Cup final St. George's College with the advantage, courtesy of Jamari Harris's strike. Jamari Morrison has come on for Shaquille Smith. And uh, to, be honest, to be honest, I don't think that's much of a surprise either. No. But it will bring some more flair in terms of the attack. No Rogers will be able to run the lines, you would expect, because they'll be utilizing Reed 
and Morrison. Yeah, and Why? Allen and Allen himself wouldn't be able or wouldn't want to come that deep to collect because they do have those playmakers in the middle of the park. Allen been struggling to find goals since the first round. Nico Allen has been on a serious drop. Ten goals to his name, all scored in the first round. Excited for him to come to the party, the KC Bassett would say. As they kick towards the hills. I wonder if that's where their hope will come from. St. George's College in the second half and the kick towards Kingston Harbor. Jamar Pusey on the board, looking for options. One of the options is to continue his journey along that right flank. He gets a throw for his team. to change the order of the top five winning cup goals of the season. It is possible. So, I think you need something like that. But <laughs> <laughs> well, I agree, you're not the highest of percentages in terms of strikes, 35 yards out or more. Establish that the name of Kingston College and George's game is to play on the ground, so you would want to find a better pass instead of a shot. And he added as well, trying to get down the throw, and again feeds it to Jamar Pusey. Pusey sends it inside the box. And, uh, Thomas was a little bit blown side there, I felt, at the back of the series on the ball. Going to be a tour into St. George's College over on that far side. What's puzzling to me is that after that dangerous ball again, I thought that once it fell to Thomas, he should have struck it. I, I, I'm curious as to why he didn't at least get a shot of goal and work the keeper. That's very perplexing. Trayvon Reed. 
The pull up. Put away. Trayvon Ray has done it. From off the bench and into the heart of the JC Massive. Equalizer for the fans for good. It's 1-1. It's a final. Oh, the Lord has done it. Trevon Reed has some more remarks and they have come to the floor. This is what he's done for the season. With quality in the wings and an exceeding attack. Should have done better or Michael. That was not for the season originally. But good awareness from Trevon Reed to get into double single for the season. Joint up for now for PSC with 10 goals. And match on now. That was very, very, very brilliant by Trayvon Reed, who came on as a substitute to do your job and get them back into the game, and that's what you did. I think that obvious Michael should have done better. He should have recovered very, very quickly to latch on to that ball because Trayvon Reed was coming from some distance to come to the ball. I think that... And you should have done what? well better from the original shot. Yes. I think God for the original shot, there was no recovery for him at that point, but the original shot should have done better. I think he should have been able to hold on to it or push it. Away. Here's Jason Thomas. Ball almost got through to Aaron Rogers. Kingston College, they have gone into second gear. Jamal Tuesday on it now. The wind in their sails. It's gone through, trying the backfield. And it didn't come off with medication. Going back there. Damani Harris. Fourth line. Shaheem Edmund from the players. The game has gone up a couple of notches. Three kicks within Jordan College. Four players inside the box for SCGC. They need a good hit over here. Sent inside the area. Here in play. Batalla Campo. Sent it high inside the area. A chance for Cameron! Not the player you'd necessarily want your chance to fall to. Camera on the centre back, but good ball into the box from Nathaniel Campbell as well. That was certainly a, a centre back strike coming off the shield. Not easy for Cameron, but took his eye off the ball and never covered it well with the left foot. Good to see St. George is looking to fight back though and get balls into the box. But certainly a very exciting game. Living up to what most would have expected to live up to. I'm just wondering if now the strength of squad might come into play for Kingston College. We spoke about their depth as a unit and the ability to make changes off the sideline and still keep that kind of quality on field. And that's the advantage that Ludlow Bernard might have over Neville Burke as well. Just to remind you, there is no extra time if the score is locked after 90 minutes. We go straight to penalties. That's the word for the Vanessa. There is Michael Ricketts, the president of the Jamaica Football Federation. Takes you with a free pick. Mix up in communication there between defender and goalkeeper. Trayvon Reed has it. Delivers his one inside. Not the best clearance. It's with Nathan Thomas. It's a chance off for KC. He's got it. Monique Allen with a strike. Looking for his 11th goal of the season. Allen, he's been in a serious drought. Casey looking a lot more dangerous. 
A lot of players getting into the box for Kingston College now, so really pressing well the purples. And this is what they weren't doing in the first half. They weren't able to get number four. In fact, Aaron Rodgers and Anika Allen were collecting most of the balls here in the half line. Now they're in and around the 18 yard area and looking very dangerous. And I think it's time for Shanta Mar Taylor. I would think for Neville Burke's spell. He needs to add something. Give a distraction for the to the KC team. I think he would, have been, he would be a great distraction and probably get Damani Harris into the game. A lot of times the Chatham Martina comes off the bench and Damani Harris steps up his game. And look at it. Chatham Martina makes his game on for Damani Harris. Well, this is the card that Neville Curtis Bell has to play. This is his main card, Chatham Martina. 16 goals on the season. And he's been a super sub in the latter part of the season. Let's see if it's worked today. It didn't work against Cornwall College. And that was part of the reason why they weren't so effective as well. He needs to come big today. Rogers with the turn. Too much on it. And I think one-on-one -on -one battles with a man called Petra King. It's going to be very difficult to pass him, even though he doesn't have a lot of pace. And Aaron Rodgers does, he knows a lot of times how to turn his body and how to shield the, the, the player. And, and I think that's very commendable of him, and that's what you need in a defender. Yeah. Excellent defensive player, Jordan Petrikin. Has played very well so far this evening. He's, he plays one of those roles that usually go unnoticed, but you can never doubt his work rate and the importance of a player like him in the team, both himself and Denton. Here is Denton, the cap. Well, that was actually Campbell. Pusey. Trying to force that one through Rousseau. Rousseau trying to find Nathaniel Campbell Pusey. Wins it illegally. Pusey with no DC charges. They are so well played with them last season. Jamal Pusey. Kingston College right back. Didn't play in that role for St. George's much. Played more on the left side actually. Conata Campbell for St. George's College. Allows it to go into touch. Takes to show himself. He seems frustrated by a few things. Conata Campbell. Yes. <laughs> <laughs> Hasn't had much opportunity to make those overlapping runs, Campbell. So this is probably one of the furthest he's been. Oh, look at that burst of speed by Trayvon Reed. And getting by Petra Pitt. He lays the ball inside to Jamari Morrison. He can't strike it from there. It's charged down. He picks it up again. Almost got it over the top to Reed. Jamar Cusey. Odipo Allen. Truthfully now. Reed. Thomas, and too much for Trayvon Reed. The idea was right, however. And we see the effect or the impact from Morrison and Trayvon Reed. Trayvon Reed getting the equalizer, and Morrison just being a bother on the right hand side of Fort Kingston College to St. George's College. And the little Bernard need the right two substitutions, and it's working to perfection. Well, they now have width, pace, and ingenuity, and I think that, that's the difference, that's what they were lacking. A lot of that was required of Rogers and Allen in the first half, which is not what you want. You just want Allen and Rogers to run the lines, pull the defense apart, and then allow the space for other players like Morris, who was a dangerous shot, and Trevon Reed with his trickery. And it's not
not working. Casey looked very dangerous now coming forward, and this is their moment. They should be looking to add another goal here and really put pressure on St. George's. St. George's College still dominating the possession. 55% at the moment. Kingston College, though, they've come into their own in the second half. Thomas delivers. Santa Moy Taylor gets a touch. Smith by the second challenge. Taylor was the best pass of White. Last touch of Benson. Playing in front of the defenders now. Nine camera of uh, St. George's College number 20. Now we see where Patrick is dropping deeper actually to that center back row. Well, it seems like they're actually rotating. Yeah, they're rotating. I think it's just a general movement based on the play. But obviously, Patrick is that man who will add the extra defensive elements when, when defended. As you see, there's a slight switch again. A bit of man marking going on. Patrick has the job of Rogers. And then Cameron to Morrison. Since Casey has made those two changes, need to cut down the space, obviously, of Casey. Not a bad turn by Onika Allen. Delivered inside, too far in front of Rogers, and safety first. By Penalta Campbell for the Victor Kingston College. Yeah, good turn by Allen. He's the one coming wide now and allowing Rogers to stay in the same. Rogers will have the speed on Petrikin, so Petrikin will have to depend on his body position and his reading of the game to keep Rogers out. He won't beat him for pace. All five politics have gone to Kingston College. Here's the delivery. Leaked off Lehman Jr. with the header. Still a chance for KFC. And collected there in the end gratefully by Robert Michael. You did mention that these two teams have never met in an out and out final. As we have a look at the corner ball put into the box by Reed, it was not a bad delivery, but good defending by St. George's. Michael <laughs> could have had himself in an awkward position. And luckily for him, he recovered well. He was in no man's land for quite a bit. It's Michael. Was just beaten for the tenth time this season, and they're in their twentieth match. Well, it's a free kick to St George's College. Nathaniel Francis is trying to set up a wall. It's direct towards goal, and it's the goal with the attack. Hook. That wasn't far away at all. I never got his girl talked about his ability with the left foot, said it's the best kicker you've seen in schoolboy football. This is a reason why. Was there a slight deflection? There was. That should have been a corner. Probably a little bit wayward in the end. Looked closer life than we have to see it on the replay, but I think there was a deflection. There, there. was a deflection there. <laughs> we should be specific, he's the best not put on. <laughs> right there, that took a slight reflection, it should have been a corner. Well, Nettlebell didn't put it down to left or right, he just said technically he thinks he's the best kicker. He's seen at the schoolboy level. And, and he's seen quite a few. Yeah, oh yes. <laughs> Rogers. But you can do well again. Close down the space. As you say, Rogers' first step will always get him away from Petrick, but Petrick does recover well and is strong. Even for his recovery, it is very quick. 
as well. Steve Brown in his Arsenal gear. <laughs> security line of things deep round. The media was so guiding it along. We got the challenge from the opponent from Nathan Powers. Yeah, we were saying that they had never They've never met in a mountain out final before St. George's and KC because obviously when they would have played each other earlier, it was in a league format. But in 1958, as we have a look at the foul here, Harry Rogers only with Patrick in yet again and it seemed like he might have injured his ankle. In 1958, they met in the league and Kingston College defeated St. George's by four goals to nil. They then tied on points and they had to go into a playoff, which which Kingston College won by a goal to nil. That playoff was played at Savannah Park in front of yeah. a, what 13,000 spectators at Savannah Ma Park. Mauricio Ventura scored the winner. This is the first goal of the game, and it came for Demani Harris. This was in the first half of the 34 minutes. Great finish by the man Harris. Great build-up by St. George's and that came after 34 minutes. Enterprising play and that was at the back of an excellent chance by Aaron Rodgers at the other end two minutes before. St. George's would carry that lead into the first at the end into the second half and then this not the best of goalkeeping from Smeichel and he paid the price. Trevon Reed with his 10th of the season coming on as a substitute and that was after 51. It's still one all. Not good sign for the KC athletes. Yep, and he's going to be replaced. Aaron Rodgers. Another jump card. Ronaldo Robinson. Another player with pace. Another player that can play wide as well. Nathaniel Campbell. Shout to Moy Taylor, who will run it. Plays it back to Amelia Rousseau over the top. Yeah, Rousseau disappointed. Would have bumped himself from that range with his left foot. Got too excited though, Rousseau. And again, he hasn't had the best of nights in terms of shooting the last few times we've seen him. Emilia Rousseau. And this one not really getting the radar as perfect as he would like. More persons will probably think you could have probably come back and pass and look at the music pass because you haven't had the best of shooting that. So maybe you would be better off if you would send that one probably back to your defenders or send it across to your defensive midfielder. But Amina Russo would not have been the best of nights. So would have wanted that again to probably strike it. <laughs> We spoke about 1958, Mauricio Ventura, the father of former Jamaica national cricketer Mario Ventura, Ventura and Valentino Ventura. Then the in, uncle. No, father. The father. Yeah. Mm. Then in 1959, St. George's returned the favor. They were tied up on point again, had to go in a playoff, and Winston Dynamo, Dynamite Lynn, who passed away a couple of months ago, he scored the winner. He's, we played in that game as well. The winner scored, and they won by a goal to nil. St. George's then went on, went on to have a 24-year drought in the Manning Cup after that. Well, kicks and colleges on 32 years and counting. We want to end that job tonight. Here they are on the attack. Amuka Allen. Too well for them. Nathan Thomas picks it up though. Nice football. Jamari Morrison. And uh, Aliko Allen couldn't do much with that. McLeod. Nice movement here. Robinson trying to get that one across. It's put into touch. So throwing to Kingston College. 
Robinson takes it himself. Reed back to Robinson. Robinson sending it one inside and Rousseau heads it away. And the shot from outside the area goes well wide of the goal. The funny thing about that era as well, Donald, the father of Neville Bell, Jackie Bell, was a member of the St. George's team of that era as well. The late 50s, early 60s. They have certainly kept it in the ranks. They have. <laughs> The brothers would have split North Street. Yeah. Actually, the Bell brothers. The Howard Bell would have gone to Kingston College. Mm -hmm. Probably the most successful of the footballers, I would say, Howard Bell. George's College getting their first corner kick of the game in the 72nd minute. Nathaniel Campbell delivers. It's headed in! times in this season when Shantamoy Taylor was not doing his job and scored, putting the ball into the back of the net. Many persons were wondering, why is Neville Bell not having this man starting? Well, there's a chance to kick some college now. We can't think to play though. And we understand, why, is, why isn't Neville Bell starting Shantamoy Taylor? And he said, don't worry, I have this. He comes off the bench and he delivers time and time again. And he does it here tonight. Well, the reason he wasn't starting after a while was because he was going through a scoring drought. He hadn't scored since the first round. He had, what, 12 goals or 13 goals after the first round. Hadn't scored. So never brought his bell and said, well, you need some hunger back in you. I'm going to put you on the bench. It has worked. He's got back that one. He's come on as a superstar. And he scored some good goals. That was a really good header. Difficult technique and great execution. Shanting away, come with the hour, come with the man, Shanting away. You're stealing Donald's words now. Shaheen Brown now. Three kick to St. George's College. In a game to play with you. And a lot of times in this match, when you see both teams, St. George's College score, kick it in the second game. And we see the foul committed on Jamie Brown. Kingston College score, they kick it into second gear. St. John's College score, they're pushing forward. So, a lot of the times in this match of the goal is what shifts momentum and it's in the favor of the libraries of North Street. So, may go direct towards goal. No, he leaves it to Campbell. The thing that Campbell, oh, that's wide of the target. A big opportunity for St. George's College to stretch that lead. He said momentum shifted and that was very, very well done by Campbell. Should have put it inside the box to have a better opportunity. But cut inside in order to get a shot off with. Yeah, I think he should have gone to the far corner. And opened up his body well. Thought he was tricking the keeper by going to the near four, but there was a space at the far corner. That's where he should have probably been looking. What can he do now? He's played three trump cards already. And maybe against the run of play that goes for St. George's as well, because Kingston College were really pressing. Not now. Poor ball. Give it up to Santa Martina, who's fouled. No. Well, the play continues. Onita Allen gets it. 
inside the box. Jackie Brown collects. Good point by Taylor. Patrick can wait. Read that one well. Denton in the way of that one too. Anyway, we'll do for St. George's College at the moment. Michael Allen has come on for the summer of music. That's a massive start for the Vikings in college. <laughs> Take a look at the, the goals in this one by St. George's College. 
Yeah, this was the excellent build of his start with Nathaniel Campbell and Damani Harris after 34 minutes, number 16 of the season for the St. George's number nine. It was a beautifully orchestrated goal. And look at that for a header. That technique from Shantamoy Taylor, that's a brilliant header at any level. Difficult to execute. And that came after 72 minutes. And there you see 2-1. Of course, the goal for Kingston College coming from Trevon Reed after 51. Campbell, Nathaniel Campbell. Here's a chance now for St. George's College. Not quite gone. Nice ball played around. Comes out as far as the soul. Raheem Williams has come on for St. George's College. So Raheem Williams is actually come on for Jaheim Brown, who was injured. Just to confirm that sub, William Bronx of Brown. And he here to point a kick. Let's go up at the back post, no problems here. For Nathaniel Francis. After rolling off, <laughs> we're not the camera at this point, certainly the heavier of the heavyweights. <laughs> with 18, Bartlett Brown with 18, Shantamar Taylor with 17, Ramon Harris with 16, and Norman Campbell with 14. Taylor and Harris can, of course, add it. Here it's AC on the foul. It's Trayvon Reed! That may have been it. That may have been the chance. And a chance to cover. That should have been the second of the game. Trevor and Reed. I would have expected him on the right foot to have done better. There was a slight bounce just before he kicked it, but he should have done better, Trevor and Reed. And a player of this quality should have been dispatching that into the park. But we've seen him score those goals many a time for Kingston College. And he will be very disappointed that he missed that at this point in the game. Wow. Again, a moment missed by Kingston College. We know that the forward line actually has been very clinical running into space. That is their game and passing the ball around and allowing your forward line to run into space. That is the strength that Kingston College has. And we saw it with Trey Van he has the speed and the show of this match. Like, yes, they're not for Kingston College and for Timbal Gardens when he plays in the West Stripe Premier League. So that should have been the equalizer for them. 
around the game with mixed up within George's College. There's some actual time management right now for SDGC. Trying to get by his marker and does. Beautiful movement. It's on the platform. Oh my goodness. Me. We have seen some misses in the game. And that probably takes the cake. You mean misses of the season? <laughs> that would run in the top two. For sure. What work from the substitute shot to my field of great strength. Impossible. <laughs> Impossible. <laughs> Impo he could have gone on his knees and got that in with his head. Here's the chance of Kingston Pullen. It's Reed again. And the follow oh, is oh, oh, yes. Is the time, the it's the the time, six minutes. It's the equalizer for three and a half minutes to go. Safety two, St. George's College two, match on in the final, match on. What a final, what a final in this 2018 moment. For giving up to everything we expected, Trevor and we get the chance again on target. Just missed a glorious chance, and the Mani Harris put it into the back of the net. The Mani Harris missed a glorious chance, yeah. and we see where Michael Harris put the ball into the back of the net. So they're taking their chance, and they miss up. Every yeah. time there's a glorious miss, there's a chance for the Mani Harris to get back into the game. It's a great final, and for me, I don't think the Mani Harris. I don't think the man has used the promotion at this point in time. You still are in the game. Anything can happen. This is three minutes plus at a time in this contest. You can get the winner. It would be a story if you are inconsolable. But then, in a matter of minutes, get the winner. So keep your head up, son, and go for it. But this is very exciting. We talked about the pace of the Lillard draw. Four goals in 90 minutes. That's extraordinary. This may be the best Manny Cup final I've ever seen. <laughs> so we've got to get on. I haven't been around yeah. very long, man. Oh, 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 oh. I've ever seen. Oh, this is exciting. It, it's, been, it's been a really good final. It's been good quality. It's been all good play. We've seen chances for both teams missed. And really good goal scored as well. Not sure. But it's certainly one of the best. It's been, it's been really good so far, living up to expectations. Before this game, we spoke about how hard it was to call in terms of a winner. We thought it was pretty even. And well, after 89 minutes, it's even. It is, it is. It's even after four goals. And remember that there will be no extra time. It's straight to penalties if they remain <laughs> this way. Here is Trayvon Reed. Continue holds firm. Maybe a health of skills of last few minutes here in stoppage time. Morrison was cut down. Three kicks to Kingston College. Yeah, Nathaniel Campbell is late there. Trayvon Reed. Reed. Nathan Thomas. Thomas deflected. Oh. Oh. Unlikely goal scorer. Well, he did make it. 
to keep my words safe from Thomas. Not in the box. Outside of the box. Well, oh, the yes, the 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 as he said, the ball was going wide. He took a shot and it ended up into the back of the net. Very emotional. Goal scorer overcoming the most. Look what it means to him. Look what it Goal. means to Kingston College. Look what it means when you see purple pride manifested. Yep. So own ball is a story. <laughs> so own ball. Well, Sends this one inside the area. It's not it down. It's a oh, chance man. here for George. Yes, it's over the top. The man has it again. Yeah, wow. Just a note. Own goal off the head of Nathaniel Campbell. Nathan Thomas, Nathan Thomas, wouldn't give up food. <laughs> I would still say they need my words because he created that. Yes, he even did. though he wasn't credited. <laughs> Famous last words, Christina. <laughs> Famous last words. Although the goal won't go to him, he did create the opportunity. <laughs> Here he is again. <laughs> Wow. Nathaniel Campbell. Cameron. Trying to win it. The win the goals. And the free kick in favor of Kingston College. There are two minutes to go in stopping time. Two long minutes to go. The party has begun. Inside the national That's probably stadium. the longest two minutes in my life, you know. They've waited for 32 years. What is 90 seconds? 90 seconds may now feel like 32 years. St. George's College trying to strike. Seconds to save their campaign. Oh, it's a throw into Kingston College. Oh, the time, you know. <laughs> Real life. Triple pride. Bursting through the seams here at the National Stadium. What a way this game has changed. Dramatic circumstances. Probably the best final these spectators inside the basketball stadium would have seen. Five goals in it. Kingston College, they had to come from behind. Seconds remaining. 20 seconds. Nathaniel Francis will hold on to dear life. Keep it weird on here. That's it. See that? The long night presented the Kingston Wow. Stadium. 
Proper pride reigns supreme. Dramatic scenes here at the Mecca of Jamaican football. Because Kingston College, they are back at the top of the pile. We have to work for the one and one. We expect it to be easier. And I prefer it easier to us.
guys. Oh. And I am Wayne Kasim Priest, the captain of Kingston College. He led his team to the 2018 Manning Cup title. What's that feeling like, Kasim? Well, it's a long time Kingston College over the Manning Cup. And for me as a captain to win with my team, it's a great feeling. And I'm just so happy. I'm just feeling great right now. All right, come, come, let me talk to you. What does this feel? Tell us, explain to the world what this feels like. This man, Lord Lord Bernard. He's a very good coach. He told me to shoot whenever I'm in front of the goal and start the passing. He was about to take me off because I was playing not up to the standard. And I said, coach, please don't take me off, coach. I have one. This man listen to me. No, my talk. Finish, man. I love Casey. <laughs> Big up Tivali Gary. All right. I'm on, I'm on All right, congratulations, boys. Go celebrate with your team. All right, Kingston College, the are. They're celebrating here tonight. North Street is purple. Congratulations. I just want you to put into words if you can this feeling. Feeling is very I feel so great. Four years ago, I left in New York. Then, a couple months ago, my mom asked me if I wanted to come back to Jamaica, and I said yes. The reason why I wanted to come back to Jamaica to win, to win Manning Cup and win champs. I'm also a high jumper. The feeling is so wonderful. I, want to, I just want to thank my mom and my family and my teammates and the coach for believing in me. One college. It bears me a fall, but never a year. Well said, thank you. Thank you. All right, we're still awaiting our MVP, Trayvon Reed. But while we do so, I'll turn you over to the commentary team. The brave may fall, but never healed. Well, there was no falling, and they far from yielded. And now they are the Manning Cup Champions for 2018. A generation would have missed this trophy. They were in the wilderness for 32 years, over three decades. And now they are on top. Sean Evans, take it away. Yes, the man of the match, Trayvon Reed, he came on as a substitute and absolutely changed the game for Kingston College, pretty much helping them to win this Manning Cup title. Congratulations, Trayvon. You would have gotten praises throughout your young career. But this one here today, MVP for the Manning Cup final, Kingston College after 32 years, Manning Cup winners. What is that like? Well, this is the best win of my life. I can't even explain this feeling at this moment. I'm, just, I'm feeling very great, great at this moment. Now, when you came on, what was the instruction that was given to you? Go out and play my own game because I'm Caesar. I want to play in the territory that the people know. So I went out and do my best. Congratulations. Thank you. Trayvon Reed there joining me while he embraces his coach Ludlow Bernard. We await the man who brought Kingston College in their first Manning Cup title after 32 years, Ludlow Bernard. Ludlow, I just want you to explain this to me. I've spoken to you since 2015. Each time you fell out of the competition, we had that conversation. It wasn't the best conversation, but no, a moment like this. Talk to me. You know, ever since I started coaching in the Manning Cup, you know, I've been serving up these kind of exciting games. In 2013, when I lost to JC, it was a similar scoreline, but I was on the receiving end. Annika Birdie told me today at the back of my head that I think I'm coach, I'm going to have to work for this one because I think a lot of goals are going to be scoring. I think I'm going to have to play a catch up. Shawani, I don't know, but I have a, I have a bunch of boys that are full of attitude. They told me when we were down two and my captain came to me and said, Coach, we're going to win it. We're not going to lose this. I was going to take off Nathan Thomas and him say, Coach, don't take me off. Believe in me. Believe in me. And him give me the winning goal. That man never scored a goal yet. He never scored a goal yet. And that is the kind of characters that you have. My captain come and him say, Coach, don't give up. I will all owe you this one. At one stage, I was just there, just trying to play the cards, play the cards. People were going down, people who expect to, to perform on the day, falling short. But Michael Allen came trumps. Michael hasn't played in a long while. BG hasn't scored a goal in a long while. 
Uh, this is his first goal. Purses turn up on the day. Trevor was the inspiration from the beginning. And I told him after him that I'm going to pull my card now. And Trevor did it and started it. I must lift my hat off to these boys. They are the ones that win it. Not even me. Not even me. It's them that they want it. Because we were at the death. And we delivered. And that is what the brief is made of. Fort is forever. Thank you so much. <laughs> Thank you very much for your time. Love, love, Bernard there. I'm going to ask Marcel Gale to quickly come and say a few words on behalf of St. George's College. But of course... All right, quickly, Marcel Gale, really quick, because we have to go to the presentation. Uh, talk to me about this game, what it feels like now, not being winners. I mean, to God be the glory. I mean, just got winning today for us to win, you know, with our fun. But I want to say congrats to KC. I mean, they show um, talent that are uh, uh, um, the, the reason why they bring their fun, whatever. You. But I thought to St. John's College played well today, but it's unfortunately we didn't get um, the coveted price. But I mean, I'm proud of the guys, um, and I mean, you know, the show goes on the show that we're going to put in. Uh, it was unfortunate today we, we didn't get the, the, uh, the, 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 the trophy, but I'm still proud of them. Thank you. You're welcome. Marcel Gale, assistant coach of St. George's College, turning you back over to Donald, Oliver, and the rest of the commentary team because we have the presentation for you. Thank you, Shawana. Well, it's no surprise that they have stayed. <laughs> the Kingston College faithful, they have waited for such a long time for this particular moment, for this moment, for this time. An incredible final here at the National Stadium. And the Kingston College, they come out on top. How would you describe this final, guys? <laughs> Very exciting final. It had all the tension. A North Street institution versus another North Street institution. And many persons wonder, would this have lived up to the expectation that it was supposed to. It did. We had glorious chances. We had very good moments. Kingston College came back from behind twice to put the game to sleep for the purple and white team from Nazi. It was just unfortunate that St. George's College did not come with the coveted prize, but it's the hunger from these two teams that I love, and it's the matches from these two teams that are so exciting. Yeah, I agree with that. Certainly an excellent final. By far one of the best I've seen as we see the, you know, the sadness on the faces of the St. George's players who will be getting their runner-up medals. But certainly an even contest right throughout could have gone either way. Both teams with chances to win it. Casey eventually took theirs. But St. George's, that chance at 2-1, that fell to Domani Harris, was certainly the bone crusher. <laughs> and what a miss it was, unfortunately, for the number nine, who has had such an amazing season, would have wanted to just top it off. And I would think at 3-1 there, Casey would have been done and dusted. Instead, resurgence shown by the Purples, got the job done, which they haven't been able to do with probably a stronger squad in the last two seasons. And finally, Ludlow Bernard jumps that this hurdle and a really mouth water in matchup i spoke about the nil all and how that was the best i've ever seen as you said donald this is the best final you have ever seen and i can't argue with you it was an excellent game the balls would have been on the side of kingston college surely you think you hear the stories behind the scenes what nathan thomas had said to his coach that he didn't want to come off because not the bernard was willing to make that change in the second half he begged his coach to stay on the field of play <laughs> and he ended up scoring the winner mind you a deflected effort but that's probably just perfectly encapsulates the fact that the stars were aligned for kingston college this evening oh absolutely and you would have guessed they were the priests were the preseason favorites in 2016 were the preseason favorites in 2017 was expected to win every single title when the, the, the structure didn't change actually and now they're realizing that they had this in the bag and Nathan Thomas, man oh man, determination, and you saw that he was so emotional because he said to Lovno Bernard, please do not take me off. And 
It goes back in his game with the Manicock Trophy. 70 goals of the season, Kingston College. And Nathan Thomas has only scored one. <laughs> so it just shows, as you said, stars align. The most unlikely man to have scored for Kingston College, as I said, or create the chance at that end. And well, what a moment it was. Presently, yeah, when you've had the saddest quarter you'd ever see. Uh, the Kingston at St. George's College, they collect their check and uh, the captain. their trophy. As well as the trophy for the most disciplined team. Yeah, that horn won't be blowing. It's actually turned towards him. Um, six form from St. George's. Unfortunate moment. And they would flash back to the 80, what, seventh minute it was, where they got that opportunity from Damani Harris. And they thought at that tapping that the game was won. That exactly. was it. Exactly. Can you imagine if that had gone in? It, how the story and the narrative would have changed. Completely. That St. George's College, based on the scoreline, would have blown Kingston College away yeah. if Damani Harris had taken that chance. Trust me when I tell you, if Damani Harris had scored that goal, I don't think, honestly, that Kingston College would have came back 3-1 down to even draw the game. But... Yeah, man, it's a very emotional moment. For, for Kingston College and as I said before they missed glorious chances and one was scored Ari Rogers missed a glorious chance Damani Harry scored Damani missed a glorious chance and we saw where the substitutes from Ludlow Bernard came into play two of the substitutes that came on for, for Ludlow Bernard scored in this matchup against St. George's College for Kingston College well there is a jubilant side of North Street the Purples the KC supporters have waited so long. Some might not have even been born when KC last won the title in 1986. Quite a few of them. Yeah. Certainly none of these players were born. And they would only have read about that in their school manual. But what a victory it is for KC. Thoroughly deserved in terms of the fortitude they showed. The brave may fall but never yield. Went down, trailed twice in this game, and when they got the ascendancy, it was permanent. I, I, I think it's a, it's a very glorious and determinant story to tell. The determination of Kingston College, and it, it was a pressing, pressing issue. A lot of people was criticizing Lego Bernard for not finishing seasons in the way that he should. He had the likes of Jason Wright and the Jangle Hyde for, for Wilmers, Greenland for Wilmers, that was so talented in school football. He went over to Kingston College, got the likes of Matheson, got the likes of Campbell, Renata Campbell, got the likes of Thomas, and didn't finish it off last season. He came this season, determined to finish it off, and he did so. And we that have been the most talented squad that he would have led London Bernard, but there was something about this unit that held firm and got them across the line in the end. Yeah, 15 wins of the season for Kingston College from their 18 matches. And just one loss in the Champions Cup which came in the first round or the round of 16 as we call it in the Champions Cup. Came against St. Elizabeth Technical. But certainly got the job done today. And many a time you, you've seen Kingston College when they've gone down in these last three years, they've panicked. And the decisions have been rushed decisions and they end up losing. This time, not so much panic. They did make changes. The changes worked. Didn't panic, kept their heads and found the victory. Kudos to them. And most persons would have thought that after St. George's against the run of play would have gone up 2-1 with that. A goal like that from Shantamoy Taylor. Excellent header. The substitute is a super sub. That probably St. George's would have killed off the game. Then the chance came. And wow. That's when the tie turned. Yeah. As you say, could have been 3-1, ended up being 2-2, and then Casey would go on to get the winner. And 3-1 in 87 minutes is pretty hard to come back from. Nathaniel Francis here who took over the reins from Shadon Rodriguez halfway through the season. A big man between made. the sticks. Oh, what a difference it makes. Yep. Well, title number 15 
Manchester Kingston College, and you must fear Kingston College from this perspective. Generally, schoolboy sports, when they start to win, they usually continue. They're winning clumps. They're runaway train. Yeah, they're winning clumps. They're seated track. They were like that in cricket, they were like that in table tennis, and they have that tendency in football, as we said, between 1949 and 1986, they won 14 titles, the most dominant schoolboy team within that period. So it's to wonder, is this the start of another one of those eras? Well, they do have quite a bit to talk about after this, I suppose, Kingsland College. And they have the data to help them along. That's the first presentation. But that's not the top prize. Anticipation, right. Just to confirm that the MVP of the final is Trayvon Reed. The MVP of Roger Reed plays for Tivoli Gardens in the Red Stripe Premier League. Trayvon Reed came off the bench and certainly made the difference. Was a part of all three goals that were scored for KC. And now the presentation to Kingston College. Kasim Priestley, who actually has a year left, can come back next year to defend the title. But the long wait is over. The night has ended for Kingston College. What a moment for the fame purpose. Your Manic of Champions 2018. And now they can celebrate. This is what it means. It's a moment that they won't forget. Fireworks on the field and fireworks to celebrate this momentous achievement. Yeah, for real, huh? a, These players will be known as the Breakers of Chains after undoing St. George's College here at the National Stadium. They walk away with the Manning Cup, Kingston College, for the first time in over three decades. What a moment, and what a night. Fortis tonight. Thank you. 